Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Salento, and I'm the owner of Texas Sinus and Snoring. Uh, today I'm going to talk to, to you about sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is a problem that many patients face and a problem that's becoming more and more common. It's a serious medical condition that can lead to fatigue, decreased performance at work and home, high blood pressure, arrhythmias, and even heart disease. Studies have shown that untreated sleep apnea increases your chance of an early death due to heart disease and arrhythmias, so we consider it very important to have sleep apnea diagnosed and treated effectively. One misconception that many people have is that snoring is the same as sleep apnea. This is not the case. Resistance to the flow of air through your upper airways is on a continuum. It starts out as noise or snoring and ends with varying degrees of airway obstruction or sleep apnea. About 40% of Americans snore while only 10% of people qualify as having sleep apnea. So while all sleep apnea patients snore, not all snorers have sleep apnea. For a detailed discussion on primary snoring, please see our discussion on Texas Sinus and Snoring YouTube channel. First and foremost, it's important to have an open and properly functioning nasal airway to establish laminar airflow prior to entering the pharynx. Therefore, the nose is usually the first place we address if there's a problem. The CT can tell us if there are any septal deviations, that's the middle wall of the nose that divides it to le left and right, any enlarged turbinates including what we call concha bullosi, uh, bony spurs or chronic sinus inflammation. The presence of obvious nasal or sinus problems must be corrected up front. Correcting a significant nasal or sinus issue may clear up snoring altogether and then we're done. If snoring persists, a sleep study is then ordered. The sleep study is important to determine if the obstruction is severe enough to qualify as sleep apnea or is just snoring and is a noise that we make. The key component of the sleep study that makes this distinction is something called the AHI or the apnea hypopnea index. It's essentially the number of times an hour that a person stops breathing and registers a significant drop in blood oxygen levels or delivering oxygen to the brain. If there are more than five an hour, it's considered to be sleep apnea and needs treatment. The initial treatment for all sleep apnea is something called continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP, the mask that people are talking about, although it's not only a mask. It can be nasal prongs or other devices. A mask is placed over the nose and mouth and a column of air is driven through the nose and is used to splint the mobile tissues at the back of the throat uh, open uh, during sleep. The degree of severity of your AHI is related to how hard the CPAP has to work to keep your airways open. This is why it's so important to ensure there is an open and functioning nasal airway before sending a patient for a sleep study. Remember that blockage in the nose can make it nearly impossible to wear the CPAP mask. Nasal blockage leads to a feeling of overwhelming pressure, nasal dryness, or even bleeding from the nose. For these patients, a small nasal procedure may be a great option. In fact, recent studies have shown that nasal procedures can decrease your CPAP settings and make you more likely to wear it at night. Patients with collapse at the tongue base and palate who are able to tolerate CPAP do very well without surgery. For patients with a functioning nasal airway who cannot tolerate the CPAP mask, we may have to perform combined surgical approaches and or fashion appliances as necessary to keep the airway open. Everyone's different and each patient requires a procedure tailored for their own anatomy. Here at Texas Sinus and Snoring, we have the latest and greatest in diagnostic equipment available, small cameras to locate the specific point of your obstruction and whatnot. We also have a CT scanner in our office which can help us determine if a simple procedure might make a CPAP machine more tolerable for you. And most of the surgical procedures are able to be performed in our in-office, in-network procedure suite. And all of these procedures are fully covered by insurance depending on your plan. Common procedures to cure sleep apnea include surgeries to help tighten the palate, also known as the lateral pharyngoplasty or a U triple P that you might have heard about. Procedures to address the tongue include non-invasive tongue-based appliances that you wear in your mouth and heat-based procedures to shrink the tongue base and various surgeries to move the tongue base forward, pulling the tongue up off the back of the throat. The most interesting surgical procedure to come along in the last decade is the INSPIRE procedure. 
And you may have heard about it on TV and radio because it's all the craze today. Inspire is the only FDA approved surgical cure for sleep apnea. It involves the placement of a stimulator on the nerve that controls the tongue. The sleep apnea sufferer then uses an app to turn the device on at night. An Inspire device works with your own body's anatomy to help gently lift the tongue off the back of the throat and fully open the airway without the use of a mask and without waking you up. I'm one of the only doctors in North Houston qualified to do the Inspire procedure. Inspire is revolutionizing the field of sleep apnea and changing the way we think about sleep in general. For a more detailed description and information on Inspire, please see our YouTube video on Inspire or please go to www.inspiresleep.com. Sleep apnea will drag you down and cause significant negative health effects. Let's see what a customized treatment plan looks like and then we'll see what your life looks like without sleep apnea.